Hello guys, how's it going? Hope you're all having a nice day so far because today we are back for another episode of the Gaming Express Show, that's right. Today we are going to take a deep look at a new game that was released on the PlayStation Store two days ago on March 13th for the price of $19.99. It is called The Journey and I'm going to start this game right away. We are actually going to review this game in its entirety and we, we are going to actually play it. So you guys are going to have a nice look at what actually goes on in this game. So The Journey was a game that was created by a company called That Game Company. Funny name, isn't it? But that company is settled in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica to be specific. And they are the same developers that uh, created the previous games called The Flower and Flow. And those two games are kind of similar to The Journey. They have uh, s similar mechanics in the way you interact with the environment and stuff, but this one has a different setting and background. So, as you can see, you've got a big desert already, you have a big sun, and basically what we're going to be doing in this game is going on a similar path. One straight path, well, it isn't going to be straight. Um, there is a lot of open space in this game, so you can actually take our time and discover our, all the little parts of this a game and the environment and little you know Easter eggs that we can find but uh, this game is quite visually astounding and the character that we're gonna play um, is actually a some sort of a marionette that is clothed in uh, some Arabic robe but uh, here we have a tutorial that tells us how to move and I don't think that that was actually necessary but because these are basic controls right and you can discover that on your own and that uh, shows you how to move and our online play, online play apparently is disconnected, but uh, we're going to have to worry about that later. Because actually, um, there's actually a multiplayer feature in this game, and it's quite fun. And you feel quite attached to the other player that you're going to be ventured with. And by the way, the multiplayer mode of this is quite fantastic, I have to say. So, here we can see that uh, the game has a lot of... Uh, it is graphically emph emphasized on... Um, textures as you can see like you can see ripples in the sand it's already beautiful you see and uh, the soundtracks are so so astounding and beautiful I have to say they flow so nicely and here we're gonna climb on top of this mountain and see what we have hmm what is going to happen I wonder oh and that is our main goal throughout the the whole journey of the, this game uh, we're gonna have to reach that the, the summit of that mountain of that glowing mountain. We're gonna have to go there, and yes, here you have we ha you have the title of the game, the journey. We're gonna move forward, and uh, here we have a bunch a big ass cemetery. So you can pretty much guess that uh, everyone else died. Most of the people died except you. You are the sole character of this adventure, and you have to reach that summit and do something amazing. But uh, right now we're just, you know, going through that cemetery and just walking on that beautiful sand, shining sand, nothing too strenuous. This game is a, I'd say this is an adventure indie game. Uh, it is not targeted for all audiences, but I think this game should be given a chance by anyone, literally anyone, because this deserves a good play. You know, I think this game can be played by all ages, all sexes, all genders, and all kinds of subgroups, but some people may not like this game because of, of its lack of, you know, uh, fast-moving action. And here we have our first glyph. We discovered our first glowing glyph. Glyph, sorry. And what the glyphs do, they actually give you power and they give you some sort of a scarf that you know, gives you the, the ability to fly, and these small pieces of, uh, these small loins of cloth uh, let you fly in the air and take big leaps into midair and jump and float, which is pretty amazing. This game kind of reminds me of uh, Shadow of Colossus and Ico, or Eco, whatever you can call it. Um, what, yeah, but these games are quite similar to that one, and the, the way that uh, the gameplay is structured and the mechanics are, and just this game in general is unique by itself. It stands out definitely, and it, by most critics, it is given a rating of 9.0 out of 10. And I I can understand why. And this game, I believe this game is a lot better than uh, Dear Esther. Yeah, I wanted I made a review video of Dear Esther before, and it was a little bit horrendous because 
there was no gameplay whatsoever. You only had to press one button and you could only, you know, you could die, yes, but there was never anything that you could do special and all you did was walk and have that uh, narrator, narr narrator, sorry, um, talk throughout the, the entire game. But here, you actually play and you move around and you can fly and you can discover new places and you can actually interact with your environment. And there's also a multiplayer mode, which is also something that I want to cover, but right now I can't seem to do so because of my stupid internet. For some reason, I can't log in into the PlayStation Network for now, but uh, let's see. What can we do here? Oh, let's hold the circle button. Yeah, by holding the circle button, you can make melodic tones, which will make uh, glyphs like these resonate and show small pictograms like these on the walls. And I think this is supposed to be like an image of uh, all the other cit citizens that died. So basically, we were at, at a cemetery. I was perfectly right. So let's see if there is anything else on that on this building. You could actually go around and go on the on the roof and see if you could find any funny things or interesting, you know, glyphs to discover. But uh, nope, nothing here. But you can like walk around and you can. This is a pretty op open space, I have to say. Unlike Dear Esther, you have a lot of space that you can walk on, and this is like a sandbox game, basically. So again, as I've said before, there is a strong emphasis on the graphical texture, as you can see. You can see the ripples, the waves of the sand, and we're gonna be seeing a ton of different things uh, along the way. Um, we, And no, not only are we gonna be seeing a, um, what is it? A basic desert like this one we are there's actually an underwater desert if you want to believe me or not I don't care but uh, there is actually a an underwater desert and we're gonna be climbing on a snowy mountain and all sorts of things it's this game is pretty beautiful and I th I see a lot of Asian influences Arabic uh, Tibetan and Egyptian from the buildings from the clothing of the character and the end, towards the end of the game, there is also a lot of snow and mountains and kind of reminds me of Tibet a lot. So let's climb on the top of this thing. See if we can find anything. Aha! Yes, we're going to be holding the circle button. So what this... Yeah. Let's see what this is going to do. So by solving this puzzle, we have more loins of cloth that are uh, liberated from their trap. And these are going to be uh, key items that will let uh, bleh, that will let us float and fly through that place that we need to go, that glowing monument right over here. But before I actually do that, I want to get that glyph over there because it will help me a lot. So I'm going to control these things. Woohoo! Pretty damn beautiful, I have to say. And here we go. We have our next glyph. The second one. I think there are 10 of these throughout the whole game. I'm not sure that's right, but uh, we need to get these loins of cloth to listen to us. Come on, guys, you can do it. Yeah, floating. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Right, visually astounding. A lot of focus on environmental textures and. Um, there is no dialogue whatsoever in this game. No story is set in stone, but it is pretty. Mu this game is pretty much open to any kind of interpretation. But the most common one, I believe, is uh, that uh, the character is uh, following, is going to achieve heaven. He goes through all of this journey, this strenuous path, all to um, get to the heaven. He he is dying. This is like the core of the story character is dying and he is reaching heaven as he goes along and climbs you know sands he goes along the sand and climbs mountains and here we have a small cutscene again no dialogue but uh, we have a some kind of mysterious character that uh, wants us to reach our goal and leads us and guides us in our journey so here we have a bunch of pictograms and like some sort of a Egyptian hi history story going on like the style is pretty much Egyptian, as you, as you can notice. And um, I would like to compare the world to some sort of a, an archaic technology, like the dawn of technology, but I think the story is about a civilization that dies and the citizens that die along with it, and uh, 
the heaven that they reach along the way. Like, civilization has, that civilization has um, completed its task and is now permitted to heaven. That's what I think about. Like, that's, that's how I can interpret the game, but, uh, if you guys want to have any more interpretations to tell me, to provide me with, you can always comment on the, below the description below and tell me what you thought of the game, if you ever played it, or if you're watching this video, what, what are you thinking about, what do you think this game is about, and here we are moving on, on to the second zone, and the game is auto-saving by itself, which is a pretty cool thing, so, if you want to quit the game at any point, well, you can't quit it at any point, but at those starting or ending points of the of each zone, you can quit the game and go back to it and do the zone that you were continuing in. So here we're moving on onto a big ass desert that has sand waterfalls. We're gonna have to jump down here. We're not gonna die. I don't think you can die in this game. I did experience damage in this game. There were a bunch of hostile monsters that uh, try to eat my scarf, but uh, other than that, I don't think you should be dying in this game, simply because you're supposed to be completing this journey, and I don't think that dying would be a good productive uh, activity, you know? So we just unlocked some me mecha mechanism that uh, liberated some more loins of cloth and those are gonna help us. These are gonna actually uh, make a path for us. These bridges, these broken bridges are gonna be recovered by these pieces of cloth, which we're gonna activate. We're gonna find all of these mechanisms and see if we can find another glyph. I think we should be finding our third glyph around here. I really wanted to show you guys the multiplayer f uh, feature because it is something that is amazing. Because when you play with a character um, you can actually meet a stranger, but you cannot communicate with them whatsoever. And you can only use the melodic tones to communicate with that person. And I think this game evokes d deeper feelings, you know? By, you know, attaching yourself to a stranger with so little communication, so little skills of, you know, because of that lack of communication, you are even more attached to your player and you are willing to stick with that player till the rest of your journey even though you don't know anything about him because what this game is is a lone adventure basically you're the, the sole survivor and by finding another stranger that is also a sole, sole survivor you're very attached to that player and you're willing you know, to get to know him by, you know, even though you, you don't know how to um, speak, if you, if, even if you don't have a language, you can always use your melodic tones to communicate, to somehow communicate, and uh, that is going to help a lot. And I think that the multiplayer does contribute to something. Um, when you're playing multiplayer, when you're close by your other companion, you are infused with the power as well, and you can both jump momentarily and, you know, take small big leaps even now and then, you know, from time to time, which kind of helps, you know, if you want to get those glyphs quicker, you can cooperate and infuse yourselves and let the other person fly, get that glyph, let the first person fly as well. We're going to try to get that other, uh, what is it? Yeah, we need to get that other scarf. Yay, activated. Let's see what we can do. Uh -huh, we have more pieces of cloth. Now, I don't think these will will uh, will recover any parts of the bridge, but I think we need to use those to fly over that place where the glyph is. Yep, that's what we're gonna do right now. Ah, are you kidding me? Oh, I just fell. Huh? I didn't even notice that before. Let's activate this. Huh? I, I never saw this pictogram before. This is pretty wild. So, yeah, this is, I think this is like an easter egg, but uh, I never noticed this. Pretty interesting. Huh. But I need to get that glyph, absolutely. So we're going to try that again and see if we can get it this time. Fly, my little baby. 
So yeah, as I said, uh, uh, the first few minutes of this game, I don't think this game is for everyone. I mean, some do have a better aesthetic uh, taste than others, obviously, you know? Some are more prone to be charmed by this game than others, you know? Different people exist. You can't, you can't satisfy anyone. And, um, but yeah, if you do, if you guys like art and, lit and literature and uh, stuff that is out of the ordinary, then you're definitely going to like this game. And um, I really suggest you get it. For the price of $19.99, it is definitely worth it. You're going to play this game on an average of three hours, I promise you. If, and if it, this, is, this only applies if you have a PlayStation 3 console. Because if you, if you don't, then you're going to have to buy it. And I don't think you should be buying a, co a console for simply one game. If you're going to make a hard choice, if you are willing to play this game, if you absolutely want to play it, then I suggest you get it. I mean, don't regret right after, right? Shouldn't be regretting for your purchases. So, we pretty much... I think there's another glyph around here. A third one. But, uh, if not, then we're gonna have to, uh, recover this bridge and see what we can do, right? Oh, actually, let me, uh, infuse this piece of cloth. Pretty beautiful. Pretty damn beautiful, I have to say. But yeah, the first, the first time I played through this game, I was truly amazed. I was speechless. It... It was a breathtaking experience when I completed the game. I couldn't believe my eyes. And playing multiplayer made made the experience even more, you know, emotional. Wow. I just love the ripples. Flowing in this game. So let's see, we've got another part of the bridge that is recovered. And I think we need to unlock one more. If not, then we're, we're gonna be able to climb it. Oh! Oh well, would you look at that? We don't have to find any more. And I think I saw a glyph somewhere, so we're gonna go get that right now. So we have our, we have our whole path that is recovered, so therefore we can move on to the third zone of this game, but uh, let me get that glyph first, right? I can see it from afar! Woo! Floating in midair is beautiful! Let me actually activate this so I because I want to jump again, right? Jumping in this game is beautiful. And at some point in the game you're not going to be able to do that anymore because the path is going to be the journey is going to be very strenuous that there is no possibility for you to fly at that point. Woohoo! Flying in midair like a pigeon. Well, I don't think pigeons fly like that, but we are getting our fourth glyph, and I think there's ten. Yeah, overall, there should be ten glyphs in this game, or more. I don't know, because there is a trophy in the PlayStation game, in the PlayStation system, that tells you that uh, you can get a, tro a trophy for finding ten glyphs overall. And wow, that sand flows very nicely. It even hits my character. Woo! Oh, the, wi the wind is actually pushing me towards the path. Hmm, pretty interesting. So, you can actually go through this path faster by holding the X button. As you can see, just flying like that. Pretty damn beautiful. And we are coming closer to that mountain as we go through these zones. And the longer your scarf is, by the way, the longer you fly. So that's actually a, a plus. We're reaching the end of this zone. We're gonna just have to resonate these stones, these engraved stones. Woohoo! Okay. Wow. Glowing path. Let us sit on it. We are meditating. Pretty beautiful. And uh, the founder of this game, by the way, is called Genova Chen. He is a Chinese uh, developer. And I can see kind of why this game is, you know, center centered around Asian influences. And I think he is taking pride in his, you know, Asian blood. 
which is a pretty good thing, I believe. And I can also see some Arabic Egyptian influences, so that's also a bonus. I congratulate the developers for, you know, being able to mix all of these cultures into one game and create a culture that is, you know, unique by itself. But uh, everything in the world, when you are inspired by something, you're will you are able to create, you know, new ideas and new stories. You're never your ideas are never truly unique, right? All ideas are inspired from other ideas and are you know that's how the world grows and our that's how ideas are brought are brought. Oh my god. Okay. Finally done with this zone and uh, the waterfall just opened out of nowhere. Pretty beautiful. I love the waterfall. And I don't think I know where it's falling, but I don't think I care either. <laughs> so, this is pretty much the end of the second zone, and uh, how many minutes has it been? 22. Okay, that's not bad.